Welcome guys to another episode of How to TIG Weld, sort of. From a guy who's not an expert, just trying to give you a little couple TIG welding nuggets. So today we're talking tungsten. Now, not so much about what kind of tungsten, but rather how to sharpen it. So there's like 14,000 different ways to sharpen tungsten. I'm gonna kinda show you the ways that I like to do it. May not be the best way, the most preferred way for cleanliness or because it's the proper way, but sometimes for me, time is money, and sometimes the fastest way to clean or to sharpen my tungsten is the best way for me. All right, so let's back up just a little bit though. Let me talk about why properly sharpening your tungsten is important. Well, mainly because your arc comes off the end of your tungsten and the shape of that arc or how that arc actually acts while you're welding is very dependent on what the tungsten surface is like, you know, the direction of the grain, the actual degree angle of sharpness. There's a lot of factors that go in there that can change your arc. And a good, clean, stable arc is one of the keys to making nice, professional looking welds. All right, so one of the first methods is the, the old belt sander method. So not preferred method, a lot of your die-hard welders, a lot of your keyboard guys probably cringing right now because there's a problem. When you're introducing foreign metals into your tungsten, it can cause issues. A lot of times there's foreign metals on these belts uh, from other things that you've ground, and it's not gonna be the most optimal way to sharpen your tungsten. But like I said, sometimes the fastest way is the best way. I personally never have any issues uh, with arc stability or anything like that when using this. Um, if I'm looking for an ultra clean, smooth weld um, because it's in a high visible place, you know, it's more about looks, um, I will use a different method instead of this, but probably five times out of 10, this is where I go. I'm trying to get something done, I dip that tungsten in my puddle, I just need to clean it off real quick, I come over here, buzz it off, put a nice sharp point on it, and then back to work. Now one thing that you want to keep in mind when sharpening tungsten, and this kind of goes for any, any kind of sharpening you do, whether it's here, whether it's on a dedicated grinding stone, no matter what you're doing, you always want the grain to run long ways. The, uh, that arc's going to kind of follow that grain off the tip of your tungsten, and if you, you know, if you do it from the side or anything but straight, um, it's going to cause it to do some weird things. But that's the first way. I come over here. I try to get about a 45 degree angle on it, buzz that thing up, nice and sharp. Sometimes I'll flip it over, do the other side as well, and that way I got two sharp points, one on each end, and if I'm actually in the cage welding or whatnot, I can slide that thing out and uh, slide it back in, have a nice clean point. Most of the time that works. Sometimes when you, when you dip that thing in that puddle, it get balls up and then you couldn't get it back in your torch if you wanted to. All right, so there you go, there's the first way. Hopefully, maybe you can see that. Makes a really nice, clean, sharp point. Um, you do wanna make sure that when you have that thing in there that you're twisting it as you're grinding that end off. You want that thing to be nice and even all the way around. I don't know, is that a 45? I don't think, I don't think 45 degrees is optimal. I think it's like 60 degrees, maybe. Whatever it is, that's about what I like right there. You don't want it too sharp. So anyway, there it is, way number one. All right, so the second way is with a bench top grinder. This is probably my second favorite way of, uh, well, I don't know. I don't use this way as much as I used to because the third way that I'm gonna show you is kind of taken over. But um, you can see I used to use this side to grind my tungsten. It's kind of cut a little groove in it. This was dedicated for just tungsten grinding. I never put steel on it, which is really what you want to do. And then, um, you know, because it has a nice groove in it, it actually get this thing nice, nice and round. So I used to do this, and then actually I went to using this flap disc that I got from Eastwood a while back. It's basically just gridded flap, flap sandpaper. And, you know, whereas a lot of people use this thing straight up, which kind of freaks me out a little bit. Um, 
I don't use this one like that. I'll actually use this one on the bottom side. So this right here doesn't have really enough grit on it to, to really take off a lot of uh, material. You know, if you kind of blob that thing up by dipping it in the puddle, this is not gonna do the job for you, but this thing will make it super, super clean. Uh, if you just have, you know, you just need to kind of clean it up just a little bit. Turn this thing on, just run this thing underneath here, give it a couple spins, you pull it out, good as gold. All right, so last but not least is a tungsten grinder. So this tungsten grinder here is from Eastwood. Uh, basically, it's just like a Dremel with a special head on it. And there's a diamond wheel in there. And then it's got these little grooves in it for different size tungstens. And the actual groove itself is made to um, promote the proper angle for the, for, to grind the tungsten. So you kind of just stick it in there. I like hold it with my thumb and then just twist that thing as it's running. That's all there is to it. Super fast, super clean, proper angle every time. And uh, it's just really the way to go. I've actually been using this thing a ton here lately. It's usually, you know, using the belt sander if I'm in a real big hurry or this bad boy. Uh, if I know that I need really good, clean tungsten with proper angles and such. All right, guys, there you go for this episode of How to TIG Weld, sort of. Tungsten grinding. It's not rocket science, but there is uh, there is some things there are some things that you need to do in order to get proper tungsten ground grinding groundage grind grind ground ground. Like I said, you want to keep those angles uh, pretty much the same. Be consistent. Have a nice consistent arc. You also want that grain to be going you know as vertical as you possibly can. So anyway, if you think uh, you know one of these is something you might want. You can go check this out. I'll actually put a link in the description where you can go check out Eastwood's new tungsten grinder. And uh, maybe, just maybe, something you saw here might help you out in your TIG welding ventures. Only, the only really concern that I ever had with it was how long the actual disc would last. But it doesn't look like it's wearing down any and I actually I would bet that you could probably flip that thing over as well once it does get down, I don't know. The other thing that would be cool too is that they made like a bench, a bench mount, so you don't have to hold it. Just mount that thing in a vise or something, turn it on, do your business and rock on. Anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more this week. Go do work, son.